I've divided the time into four distinct stages. Stage one is the positive physical response stage. It lasts only three to five seconds and occurs instantly after the point is over. Notice what happens. The player quickly turns, places their racket in the opposite hand, which facilitates relaxation of the dominant hand. The shoulders are back. The head is up and the racket is carried by the throat at the balance point. Notice also that the player's walk is high energy and the eyes are forward and down. The image is strong, powerful and confident. After a great shot, players may clench their fist. They may clap for their opponents after a great shot or may simply turn and walk away from a mistake. Top players have learned to control their emotions by projecting a strong, fighting, positive physical image as soon as the point is over. Poor competitors have a weak physical image following the point and allow all kinds of negative emotions to be projected with their physical bodies. Stage two is called the relaxation stage. This occurs three to five seconds after the point is over. It lasts anywhere from 6 to 15 seconds, depending upon how physically or emotionally stressful the previous point was, or how important the next point might be. Again, notice what's happening. The player's eyes go to the strings, which simply represent a convenient resting place for the eyes, facilitating the relaxation response. The player continues the high energy walk across the baseline, and if necessary, continues to move back and forth until breathing and heart rate have stabilized. Arms and hands are relaxed and free. The player stretches, bends, takes deep breaths to enhance the relaxation effort. Notice, however, that even though the player is continuing to relax, the image remains strong and competitive. Stage three is called the preparation response. It begins as soon as the player starts moving toward the baseline to serve or toward the serve return position. This stage typically lasts three to five seconds and is often initiated by players lifting their eyes and directing them to the opponent's side of the court. Players typically pause here momentarily and often make a strong statement with their physical bodies again, as if to say, I will win this point. The purpose of this stage is to ensure that the player knows the score and has thought about what they intend to do before the point begins. It's programming the computer before you start. The last stage, stage four, is the ritual stage. It lasts five to eight seconds and begins as soon as the player steps up to the baseline to serve or takes the return of serve position. Rituals serve to deepen concentration, get you appropriately relaxed and adjust arousal levels just prior to the start of the point. For serving, the physical ritual consists of at least two components. The first is bouncing the ball two or more times, and the second is pausing after the last bounce to help prevent players from speeding up their service motion under pressure. For returning, the physical ritual involves stimulation of the feet and any number of physical gestures that help you get absolutely ready physically to play the point. Examples seen here are jumping up and down on your toes, swaying back and forth to keep muscles free, and so forth. During stage four, players should be thinking and visualizing only about the serve when serving or about the return when returning. No thought about grips, strategy, or strokes should be entertained at this time. Your goal is to play instinctively and automatically now. Your rituals in stage four are designed to make that happen. You can see the image is very, very poor. 
eyes are wandering, the racket's dangling down. There's very little intensity being shown at all by the player. Rituals are very lazy looking. There's no real building or mounting of energy into the point. Even when the player wins a point, you see no noticeable positive emotion. You see no sense of fight. The presence of the player is weak. When his opponent hits a great shot, again, you can see him recriminating himself, getting upset with himself, rather than acknowledging perhaps that his opponent hit a great shot. This is what players who are not mentally tough look like. All right, Jeff, what I want to do here is to go through all four stages, each one separately, and to get you really focused on what it is I want you to do precisely in each stage, okay? okay. All right, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to end a point with a volley. You can hit a winner, imagine a winner, imagine an error. Okay. And this is what I want you to look like and to hold this for me just like I do, okay? You're going okay. to come up, hit a volley, and I want you to turn and hold this position for me right here. Okay. Okay? Okay? Beautiful. And now you go to your strengths. Okay, keep your head still up. All right, it's a good energy walk. Now you just kind of move around the, the back of the court. Just kind of move around the back of the court. And try to get your arms relaxed. Move around, be very focused on only on relaxation, on calming yourself, getting yourself over the stress of the last point. And once you feel yourself starting to get ready, that your heart rate's down, your breathing is stabilized. Now you, you start moving up to the court and you start signaling the beginning of stage three by taking a very strong position some distance, maybe two or three feet back of the baseline. I don't want you ever to come across the court and walk right up, stop, and start your serve. I want you always coming across the baseline because that will ensure you don't rush. Come across the baseline and you're always moving. You never stand still during the recovery phase. You move up, you try to make a good strong statement with your physical body as if to say, I'm going to win this point. And the first thing you do mentally is you think of the score. And initially, as I trained you um, with this method, I wanted you to say the score. The score is 40-30. And then you think about what you want to do. Okay. So let's go back, have you go through the full stage up to stage three, and we'll add stage four in just a minute. Okay. okay? So again, let's imagine the worst mistake you've ever made, and this was on a critical point. Okay. And then let's see how you're going to look. Okay, Jeff, let me just check again. What is your stage three in return of surf? What is your stage three? What what are you thinking now? Just to kind of look up and tell him like maybe I'm like give him a look maybe of like I'm going to win the point. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna try to give a really strong image. You're gonna look to the other side, and you're actually gonna rehearse in your mind returning the ball off both sides exactly where you want it to go. Where do you want this return to go? If he's staying back. Where, where do you want the return to go, basically? Probably down the line. Okay. His backhand. Um, because he has a weaker return off the backhand side, you may try to get the ball generally on the backhand side of the court. All right. So, and also on your ritual. As far as when you move up, I want to make sure that your stimulation of the feet, that there's stimulation of the feet before you move. I don't want you standing still too much. I want you always moving, and particularly in big points when you get nervous, I want the feet moving constantly prior to the start of the point. Okay. Okay? Good shot.
Okay, Jeff, hold up just one second. Tell me, when you were just starting in stage three here, what went through your head? What were you thinking about? I was getting ready to serve in volley. Okay, what what did you think? First of all, do you know the score? Yeah, 15 love. Okay, and what were you thinking that you wanted to do on the point? Are you very clear? Are you going to serve and volley? You, yeah. you know exactly what you're going to do. This is the critical part right here in your head. I want you thinking precisely what you're going to do. Visualize what you think is important for you on this next point. And, but the image is very strong. I like what I saw. And the little pump that you just gave is a kind of a, a gesture of fight. <coughs> Not to intimidate your opponent, but to keep yourself very fired up emotionally and fighting forward, always aggressive, okay? All right, great. Okay, that's very good on the mistake. You had the shot. And the other thing I want to comment on, your, your time between first and second serves is getting much better. You took about six seconds that time between first and second. So rather than just bouncing and going again, you actually took about five to six seconds so that you knew exactly what you're doing. You're together. You really were focused before you hit that second serve. You were very relaxed. And that's exactly what I want to see. Okay. Okay, that was real good. Excellent. Here are a few things to remember when implementing the 16 second cure. Initially this four stage routine will feel unnatural and forced, just like a new grip or stroke adjustment. With practice however, this routine will begin to feel very natural and take on your own personality and flavor. Make your performance between points more important than your during point performance and you'll be amazed at the results. Always strive for a perfect between point performance and your during point performance will reflect it. An excellent way to practice the sequence is to rehearse the stages on court without an opponent just as we did here in this tape. You can begin to practice off court by simply visualizing yourself going through each stage as you imagine yourself in competition. Mastering the four stages so they consistently appear under pressure takes much practice and effort. Just like the physical skills, you must constantly practice to get results. And remember, it's easy when you're winning. The true test is crisis and adversity. There's one additional consideration that's important here. You should be taking at least 16 seconds between points, and even more if necessary. But you must also do your best to keep pace with the server. When the stages are completed properly, you should not appear to be stalling or wasting time. In summary, Mental toughness can only be achieved through control. Learn control over such emotional responses as tanking, anger, and fear. Top competitors have learned through hundreds of hours of competition that developing automatic routines for managing mistakes, staying relaxed, getting optimally prepared and ready for each point facilitates the emotional balance needed to be mentally tough. They have learned that to be positive and fighting on the inside, you must learn to project these feelings on the outside. Tennis offers a supreme test of your mental toughness. Stay with it until you master it. Only then can tennis be truly fun and fulfilling. And just as exciting, the mental toughness skills you learn from your tennis will help you deal better with the pressures of life as well.